Hello, thank you for returning to my channel. The topic of this video is balancing of chemical equations. According to the law of conservation of mass, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It only changes its form. So when a chemical reaction takes place, whatever is there in the reactants should also be there. Whatever atoms of whichever element are present in the reactants should also be present in the, uh, in the products. That's the logic why we balance chemical equations. And since we know that if we take a certain amount of the reactants, a certain amount of products would be formed, a chemical reaction can give us a lot of information about the states of the reactants and the products, the conditions of the reaction, and therefore just from the fully explained chemical equation, we can plan our reactions as to how much of reactant should we take if this is the amount of product that we intend to obtain. So how do we balance chemical equations? I'll be doing a few videos, two or three, to explain how balancing is done. It's a very simple mathematical process. And uh, what are the steps? The first step is that we write down whatever reactants, the elements in the reactants and the elements in the products. Once we write down the elements in the reactants and the products, then we start balancing them out. This is a hit and trial method, but you usually achieve the balancing by this technique. So once when you have written down, for example, this is the equation magnesium combines with oxygen to give us magnesium oxide. So as we, I will move from simple problems to more difficult problems in subsequent videos. Magnesium and oxygen are the elements in the reactants and magnesium and oxygen are the elements in the products. How many magnesiums are there in the reactants? One magnesium and how many oxygens? Two. How many in the products? There's one magnesium atom and how many oxygens? One. So what is balanced? Magnesium is balanced while oxygen is not. So oxygen, there are two oxygens here and there's only one oxygen here. Remember, whenever we are balancing chemical equations, we cannot change the chemical formula of the substances, that is the reactants and the products, which means we can never change the subscripts. We can never do anything to the formula. The only place where we can change is that we can multiply the entire formula by a number. Okay? We can multiply the entire formula by a number to cause the, uh, if the change that we want. That is known as the coefficient. So we can, if you have two oxygens here, we can change the coefficient here. So if we multiply oxygen by two, we would balance the oxygens. So if we multiply, that is we can only add the coefficient. So the coefficient is 2, but as soon as I put the coefficient 2 for magnesium oxide, not only does the oxygen become 2, the number of magnesiums also becomes 2 because this is also automatically multiplied by 2 because when you're multiplying the entire formula by a number, all elements are multiplied. So now you have two magnesiums and oxygen. Oxygen is now balanced, but magnesium is now not balanced. So what should we do? If we multiply this side now, on this side, if we multiply magnesium by two, we would get two magnesiums and we, the equation would be balanced. So in order to multiply this by two, we put the coefficient two here, right? So what have we done? We have balanced. Now look, there are two magnesiums on this side, two magnesiums on this side, two oxygens on left hand side, two oxygens on the right hand side, that is the reactants and the products, therefore the equation is balanced. Let's take another example. You have xenon and fluorine combining to form xenon hexafluoride. There is how many xenons in the reactants? There's one xenon, two fluorines, one xenon and six fluorines, right? So xenon is already balanced. Let us come to fluorine. How many fluorines are here? There are six and two. To make this equal to six, remember we can only multiply. We cannot divide. We can only add coefficients. So whatever we have to do has to be a multiplication process. So what do you multiply two with to get six? We multiply two with three. In other words, this is the coefficient for fluorine. 
So if I put a 3 here, 3 twos are 6. So fluorines are balanced. And what about xenon? There's one xenon here and one xenon here which is already balanced. Therefore, now this equation is balanced. Moving to the third example, iron combines with oxygen to give us iron oxide. Now, how many irons are here? There's one. How many oxygens? Two. How many irons? Two. How many oxygens? Three. Remember, usually whenever you have oxygen and another element, you always give preference to the other element if it is unbalanced. And then you move to oxygen because usually oxygen and hydrogen are elements which would be present in multiple reactants and multiple products too. Therefore, we usually balance them in the end. But if the other element is already balanced, we straight away go to oxygen and hydrogen. Now, iron is 1 and iron is 2. In order to make iron, balance iron, we should multiply this side by 2. So multiply this side by 2. If you do that, you get two irons, right? And now iron is balanced, but oxygen is three. And if there is three oxygen here, and how many oxygens here? Two. Two and three. Whenever you have the numbers two and three, the smartest way to balance them is multiply them with each other. That is, multiply this side by three and multiply this side by two. So if I multiply this side by 3, I get 3 oxygens, that is, this becomes equal to 6. And I have to multiply this by 2. So if I multiply this by 2, automatically, iron which was 2 gets multiplied by 2 also. And this becomes 4, while here I have only 2. So I will have to go back now. This side, now I have 6 oxygens on this side and six oxygens on this side so oxygen is balanced but iron i have four on this side and two on this side so if i multiply this by another two i would get four two so two into two is four i already had to multiply this by two now so the coefficient here would be four four iron plus three oxygen will give you two fe2o3 so that is how this equation would be balanced. I'll do one more because I think I'm running out of time. And then in the next video, I'll solve more questions. Silver combines with H2S to give you silver sulfide and hydrogen. Let us write the number of elements on the reactants and product side. There's one silver, two hydrogens, one sulfur. Two silver, two hydrogens and one sulfur. Right? So, one silver, two silver. So, what should you do? You should multiply this side by two. Sulfur is one and sulfur is one. Yeah. So, if you multiply this side by two, you get two silvers, two hydrogens and one sulfur. Hydrogens and sulfurs were already balanced. Therefore, this is a balanced equation. In the next video, I'll solve more questions, like we'll balance more equations. And as we move on, we'll come to more complicated equations. Thank you for watching. Keep returning and come back for part two. I have more to tell you. Thank you.